Joe Rogan decided to have six unfunny comedians on his show. Does that mean he's no longer the GOAT? Let's talk about it. Yeah, that's right, friends. We're going to review Joe Rogan's Burn the Boat. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to see what happened. And I will give you my honest opinion. But before we do any of that, my name is Z and I'm the man. You may know a Z from Our Reviews Will Kill You. And we're going to talk a lot about Joe Rogan's latest live special. I did not catch it live, so I do not know if there was an edit. I know he dropped an F-bomb. Like, the F word you're not supposed to say about a certain people with bundles of sticks. And I know that he dropped a lot of the R word about people whose is special. Very special. You know, those brake retarders. So, I think, overall, what do I rate this special? Well, what's interesting is I... First of all, Joe Rogan has not dropped a special in six years. His last special was, I think, called Strange Things. I don't think I reviewed that professionally. I think I watched it and was like, yeah, it's all right. I've never found Joe to be the greatest comedian on earth. He's a very good interviewer, and he's mildly amusing. Obviously, there's some sort of connection there with the world's second biggest podcaster to Tucker Carlson. But I think Joe does a great job. And I actually thought this special was really funny. I don't think it was hilarious. It was not. There's a big gap between him and Dave Chappelle. When people talk about stand-up, they're going to say, like, Dave Chappelle is, like, greatest of all times. And Rogan is, like, yeah, like, like, around here. He's a funny guy, but he doesn't understand the subtle nuance of telling jokes. I'm going to I'm going to give you the bad and then I'm going to give you the good and then we're going to look at what everybody else says. From my perspective, the bad is he screams an awful lot. And screaming doesn't get you anywhere. I know Joe likes to be very physical. He likes to be in your face and screaming at people, but I think there's there's a nuance to language. He talks a lot about language and he has not mastered the nuance of of the Chappelle's where he's calmly relating a story to to you and he's he's giving you the details and he's like gotcha bitch you know like he just he knows how to use his, the timbre of his voice and understands the nuance which i think makes him one of the greats whereas joe's just like i'm a crazy monkey i'm angry at people i'm a neanderthal so there's that component to it I did. He had some solid jokes. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely some solid jokes. I love. There's a joke about the Chinese that he makes and Chinese has ho. And I, I loved it. He, uh, I won't tell his joke, but essentially he was comparing China to the U.S. and how long they've been around and how many things they've created and they spoke and how you know the U.S. is young and naive and doesn't understand that they can create things that are as powerful as TikTok and. The virus of unknown origin, which I thought was pretty good. So he he gets it there. He does some good things. I think overall, I'm going to give him an 88. 8 out of 10. Not a 10 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Because it's a little too long. He could have tightened it up. There's a lot of good jokes. It also, I think it hurt him that he was in Texas where he's like, Oh, it's my new adopted home state. Bro, either do it in the mothership or... Or do it in, like, I don't care, Ohio or Florida. I don't care anywhere. But in Texas, I'm also going to complain a little bit. And and this is, uh, I guess, a live thing. So Dave Chappelle's specials all look super tight. And they have, they're very interesting. And there's a lot going on. A lot of pictures, behind the scenes stuff. (coughs) Rogan's left a lot to be desired. It was like. An interesting stage, and every once in a while, they, like, zoomed up on his face. By the way, bro, dial it down a little bit on the TRT. He's he's taking testosterone. His head just looks enormous. He looks like his head is so big, it's going to explode. 
He just looks like he, from all the testosterone and all the steroids is on his head and his body. He's just going to leave. It's going to explode out of his chest like an alien. Oh, God. Like, dial it down, friend. Dial it down. But still very good. A lot of good jokes. The only thing I'll say is I feel like Dave typically has a theme around his entire show. And this was called Burn the Boats. And I don't know what boats he was burning. But let's see what everybody else had to say, because this is the part where it gets amusing to me. It makes it even funnier. So I think Rogan did a good job. It was better than his last special. Let's put it that way. But this is where I think it gets amusing, is where the mainstream media, the rap, Joe Rogan burned the boats review. Netflix special relies on the same old COVID and gay jokes. Okay, <laughs> let me just point this out. I'm going to defend Joe here. Those... Not a lot of people have been making COVID jokes. Just going to point that out. There, there's there been a couple of people. Jon Stewart made one big COVID joke. Nobody else making them. And Joe hasn't had a special in six years. And a lot of the stuff he talks, he talks about getting canceled. He talks about CNN. He includes them in his premises, which I thought were pretty amusing. It's strange where he's like, oh, it's weird to hear the Prince of England criticizing you. And I'm like, yeah, I was a little tired of the, you're going to do mushrooms just like me, man. That that wasn't great, but it, it's still fine. But they are just, they're, they're going after him. Six years after his previous stand-up, which we talked about. Uh, he hits all the different... I think the live thing may have hurt him. It was very not produced. It's weird because I watched... I've, I've seen several other stand-up specials, and you could almost win the audience over if it's filmed in the right way. Pete Davidson, remi I'm reminded of, where his looks super cool. But he says things that are just not funny and atrocious. And I thought his special was super weak. Whereas I thought Rogan, and he even stumbled over, over his own words, which, I, hey, more power to him. The Majestic Theater looked really good. And I liked the fire effects. And I thought it was lit very well. But it wasn't as tight as it could have been. And you got to remember, most stand-ups are filmed over a series of, you know, Maybe they do anywhere from three to six nights and, and put a, co a combination of the best takes of each joke and put them together. This was live, so I give Rogan a ton of credit for that. He did it straight up. It was live. He did a good job. You know, you cannot an hour of of a set and just did did great, you know. UFO, all the normal stuff. He did UFOs and Fear Factor and all that stuff. It was strange, though, because it was almost as if he was introducing himself to the world again because he's like, I was the host of the... I, I, I'm I, the... He didn't talk that much about the UFC. He did mention it. But he's like, I used to be on Fear Factor as the host of Fear Factor. I was just like, why are you telling all these people things they already know? But I, I guess it was a setup to his joke. Again, there was a lot of things around language. But people are like, if you're new to his humor, you might want to brush up on his past comments before wading into this stand-up. The dude's the most famous podcaster on earth. If you're not, you're not watching him if you don't know who he is. And that's why I didn't understand why he felt like he had to defend himself. He was like, when they put <laughs> when they put all my use of the N-word together, I feel real stupid. Okay, Joe, <laughs> whatever you say. Uh, here's variety. Joe Rogan's burn the burn the boats. A self-styled provocateur's jokes feel decades too late. I mean, this is kind of Joe's style. <laughs> Netflix has found the stopgap solution between periods of Dave Chappelle specials. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's some sort of inverse Chappelle. He is not a generally a generationally gifted comedian or even a very good one wow that's brutal but his invocations of culture war wedge issues bring him attention that would otherwise have not merited this is not a revelation rogan who's early wow these guys are going hard in the paint he's 
I'm not going to say he's not a bad comedian, which, by the way, I don't know why he felt the need to mention. I mean, his Tony Hinchcliffe joke was really good because we all know what flavor Sunday that Tony Hinchcliffe liked. And then he felt the need to mention the machine feels strange. I don't know why he brought up Burke Reicher, but sure, whatever. And he you know, it's like old man shouting at the at the wind, at the at the you know, the clouds, like, I wanna be able to use my old derogatory words, which I thought he actually had a good bit. He he, he put it all together. Uh, there was a part about you know the pregnant man, which I didn't think was great. But man, this guy covers every single joke that he made, and they're just like, uh, and 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 utterly disavowing his own work, even as it's happening. Rogan shows that for all he may have the trappings of a marquee Netflix comic, comic, he fundamental he lacks a fundamental quality the best comedians share: courage. Tell me who you think the best comedians are because you hate, you clearly hate Dave Chappelle, Daniel Daddario. So who are the best comedians? Please share with me who you think is hilarious. I would be shocked. Uh, We'll briefly go. Here's, oh, this is the rap. We covered the rap. And here's the bizarre one. This just came out, I guess, Saturday night. And you're going to see this on Monday morning. Joe Rogan burned the boats. Rotten Tomatoes has it at 59% on the audience score. Am I smoking something silly here? Which I'm not. Uh, 50 plus ratings at 59%. I'm shocked there's no professional reviews and there's no audience reviews. Not enough to create anything. They just like they don't want to talk about it. They want it, they don't want to talk about it. They want it because cause Dave Chappelle usually gets 99s, 98s, and 94s. And you would think with Rogan's massive audience, he would get more than 50 views. So we'll check back up on this. But I think Netflix is hiding some things. Or not Netflix, I'm sorry. Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, let me know what you think. Did you see it? I definitely tried not to spoil any jokes or anything. It's kind of the usual for Rogan. Mushrooms, aliens, uh, trans Jenga jokes and the like. And... Uh, Nothing super surprising other than he did talk about some of his own misgivings about things that he's done. So let me know what you think down below. I give him an 88, solid B+. I don't think it's an A, but I don't think it's bad. I thought it was pretty good for a Joe Rogan special. For a stand-up special, I thought he did pretty solid. It's like an hour and seven minutes, and it's live, and he he hit all the notes. Then he needed to. There were some lulls, but I don't expect you know miracles from an unedited special. So good job, Joe. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. In the meantime, catch our full-length audio podcast, usually Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We stream as best we can, when we can. And then if you get the luxury of catching our audio podcast on iTunes, that's also great as well. We do lots of videos. We do 10-second reviews of all sorts of shows that you've probably heard of or watched. Try to make some jokes there. And you could join and become a member of the channel. We would appreciate it. Like and subscribe as always. If you're still here, I appreciate it. We would love to have you subscribe. Help grow the channel. We appreciate it. It really helps with everything else. But in the meantime, don't burn your boats. Go home. Have a good night. Thank you. But I'm on to the next one.